Well, hello. Hello, and welcome to our home in Koh Samui, Thailand. So come on in. So this is actually our largest condo that we've rented since we've been um, slow traveling around. It's actually like 1,300 square feet over two floors, which is probably more than we need, but we did have some family come visit us for a week, so the extra space um, actually worked out in our favor. Um, so as you can see, very spacious, open concept, um, you know, living room, uh, very big couch, looks super comfy. Um, it's not that comfortable. Um, looks better than it actually feels. Uh, but you know, nice smart TV, which doesn't work the greatest, um, and it loses connection. But anyways, still very nice. Um, beautiful, big dining room table. And this section here, we call it the yoga station. Um, this is where Janet would do yoga most mornings. Um, but other than that, it's sort of like an unused area. Um, what else can I say about here? Like little desk that we use to charge all of our gear and all of that kind of stuff. Um, there is an air conditioner down here, um, which you know we are in the month of April, one of the hottest months in Thailand, so air conditioning runs a lot. They do have plenty of fans as well, uh, which is very handy. And then if you follow me to the kitchen, I wouldn't say the most beautiful kitchen, uh, but it has everything we needed. So it has, you know, stove top, oven, microwave, decently equipped with plates and utensils and all of that kind of stuff. Kettle, coffee machine, sink, little dishwasher, nice full-size fridge, which we do appreciate. Big pantry over here for storage. Um, and it is a two bedroom, three bath condo, which again is more than we need. However, it was very nice having a bathroom on the main level. So again, very simple, but spacious bathroom. One extra thing that we have, um, we do have a washing machine and it's out in this little storage area. So this is just where the water tank, the water pump, extra storage is. Um, it actually came with some bikes. So <laughs> I did a little bike riding. <laughs> And there we have our washing machine. And we do have a couple of drying racks. Drying rack here, then we have a drying rack upstairs. So I think we're going to, actually we'll take you to the front patio. One thing Jan and I always need is outdoor space. And um, plenty of outdoor space here. Just very beautiful patio. Um, looks like the seating is very nice. It's sort of broken, um, but anyways, <laughs> we we may do with that. Um, but very nice and spacious. There's a nice little um, awning up here uh, to try and protect us from the sun. Do we sit out here a ton? Not as much as I initially thought. We spent time by the pool, which we'll take you on at the end. Uh, but for now, I think let's head upstairs. Okay, welcome to the second floor. We'll take you first into the spare room. Um, we did actually have some guests who did use it. Um, huge up here, really huge bedrooms. And I probably will start to sweat because we do have the air conditioning off up here during the day when we're not up here. Uh, so first, when you come in, very nice, big, spacious bathroom, walk-in shower. Um, we love the hot water on demand. It's got a really cute, just like little vanity. Very nice and comfortable. Huge, huge bedroom. Um, this is the second room, like we said, big queen size bed. The beds are surprisingly comfortable. They're firm, again, we like firm beds. Not for everybody, we love it. And they're like, this room would be even bigger, except there's a, this gigantic walk-in closet that's really sort of storage for some old artwork, but lots of closet space back here. Nice windows that open up. It's got its own AC unit. And uh, yeah, it was perfect when we had guests here. <laughs> this is just tripping over fans. Okay, we're going to the master now. And this is the master suite. So again, nice big 
I think we have a king. We have a king size bed. Super comfortable as well. We love the firm bed. We've actually had amazing sleeps on it. We have just nice big um, spot where we, whatever, headphones, places to lay things, big um, mirror. We have a nice big closet over here, double sided. It has a safe in there as well. Doesn't work, but that's the thought that counts maybe. Um, and we each have bedside tables, which we don't always get. So that's super nice. We have our own AC in here too. It's a bit of an old battle axe, and, but you know, it keeps the room cool. And we of course as well have our own ensuite with walk-in shower. So we've got a huge walk-in shower. Um, really appreciated this storage unit just for keeping all of our excess things. Fine vanity, I mean, again, it's not super fancy or modern, but it gets the job done and it's really nice. And we have a second outdoor space upstairs, which we thought we would use a lot more than we did. It's a bit of a sneak peek at the pool that you can see down below. But um, we have our drying rack out here um, for drying our clothes, which is amazing because everything dries so fast little chair up here. And this deck is shady all day, morning, um, afternoon and evening. Um, so you do get a little bit of breeze up here. Um, we didn't take a lot of advantage of it, but it's here and it's lovely. And of course we have the nice views over the pool, which is where we're taking you next. Okay, one of our favorite things about staying in this place is we didn't have to lock up an apartment and go to another floor um, and take all of our stuff to the pool because our pool is right outside our unit. And wow, what a difference that makes when you can just walk out, you don't have to lock your door, your pool is literally right outside your unit. It really feels like you're at home. So we loved this. Didn't we, Mitch? And this is how close the pool is <laughs> to our unit. We've used this pool on the daily. In Thailand, especially in April, May, and June, hottest months of the year, which I don't think we maybe plan for, the average temperature is 34, feels like 45. Yesterday, the feels like was 48. It gets very hot, so we need a pool. However, the pool is not always refreshing. The pool is about 93 or 94 degrees. Like, it, it is like soup. However, you're wet and, it, you know, it's, it's nice on the uh, nice hot days. But like a very nice big pool. It's lit up at night. Um, the water's always super clear. We just really love this space. Um, there's five sun beds with three umbrellas. And it's not a busy complex. There's only six or eight units um, and just not a ton of people. Um, there's a lot of days that we're the only people at the pool, which is absolutely fantastic. And just very nice grounds as well, as you can see. Sort of not so great, but a big lawn down there. And yeah, super safe, super quiet complex. It's very, very nice. quiet. And again, so we're about a 10 minute walk to uh, Fisherman's Village, um, to the ocean. So, you know, location for us has been really fantastic and probably a five minute walk to the Bopat Food Market, uh, which is very affordable um, and a lot of different little food stalls. And uh, we've really enjoyed um, the food market. Anyway, I think it might be pool time. It's late afternoon it here. Um, it's pretty hot. And even though that pool is 93 degrees, when you sit out here for a bit, you feel like you're about 100 degrees. So exactly. 93 actually does feel a bit refreshing. So I think now, Jen, um, I think we're going to jump over to our cost of living for uh, 28 days in Thailand. Yes, we're wrapping up here. We're actually leaving here tomorrow. So uh, stay tuned if you want to see what our month of living on Koh Samui, Thailand cost us. Thailand is known as one of the cheapest places uh, for a getaway and uh, we'll let you know if that uh, is really the case. Well, hello everyone. <laughs> as you can see, we're not in Thailand anymore. No, we are definitely back. We're back in Canada and uh, we have tallied up our expenses for Thailand and we're gonna run through that today. We are having some beautiful Warmer weather than usual, really, in May. The weather is spectacular. We're at the beginning of May here in Ontario, and I think it's 22 degrees full sun. So yeah, we hope that you're gonna keep following along because although we are back in Canada and done our adventures abroad, we are going to be spending 
a beautiful summer in Canada. We're going to be exploring around a little bit um, and exploring even close to home. And we're going to be doing all that in our converted sprinter van where we will be living this summer. And we're going to see if that life suits us. <laughs> <laughs> and we're also going to see, is it more expensive to live in our van in Canada or to uh, live abroad? So that'll be interesting. It will. And that's a perfect segue into Thailand because of course I think everyone thinks of Thailand as being one of the cheapest places to go, um, to stay, to eat, um, to live. And um, from our experience, which you'll see coming up, um, Thailand, I believe can be yep. very cheap. You can, if you wanna be a backpacker and um, living in very simple accommodations, and eating very simple food, and uh, that can definitely be the case. I believe it's possible. However, um, if you're working off a modest budget and um, you're sort of beyond the backpacking days, which we certainly are, and you want a little bit more comfort and nicer accommodations, um, Thailand is not that dirt cheap place. Um, we found it to be pretty much on par actually with some of the other places yeah. we were at. And so um, we should hop right into it, starting with our accommodations. All right, so accommodations for the month um, were $2,172. And that does include our hydro, which we had to pay for, and the hydro bill was 241 um, Canadian dollars. That could definitely be cheaper. We did have a very large condo, and I think cooling our big bedroom upstairs at night and cooling the lower the lower level of the condo during the day, it was quite big, I, and it it worked quite hard. Yeah. Um, so, and we did run it when we when we were there. It was certainly very hot, so we did run our hydro a bit. That could have been cheaper, but um, you saw our Airbnb tour, so that's what you get for. Um, around $2,100 Canadian. Yeah. Um, next, we had our eating and dining out, which we mostly, very much mostly, ate out um, while we were in Thailand. We spent $1,246 um, eating out, and essentially that was essentially every meal, breakfast, yep. lunch, and dinner. Yep. Um, so next were our groceries. We spent $301 for groceries and we did cook a couple of meals in, not many at all, um, but that did include all of our water that we had to purchase, um, you know, some snacks and uh, toilet paper, all of that kind of stuff would be part of the $301. Yes, and we did realize later, um, you know, everyone does say it's just cheaper to eat out. We did go to the grocery store. We were finding very beautiful, like, chicken breasts. Um, the market close to us had very reasonably priced vegetables and eggs and spices. So if we were to do it again, I actually probably would cook yeah. more in the condo. We were well equipped for that. Um, so we probably could have... Not necessarily saved a lot of money, but maybe just eaten a few less noodles. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> um, anyway, next we had our entertainment. Um, so the big one here was the boat cruise. Um, if you haven't watched that video, that was a really fun day out. It was like eight hours, so check that video <laughs> out. Um, but that, our entertainment was $140 for the month. All right, so transportation for the month um, came in at $100. And that would be some, you know, taxis from the airport to the airport, um, you know, a couple little red trucks that we took and all of that kind of stuff, so. And the day that we did the beaches, was that taxi? Because yes. yeah. we basically hired the taxi for about five hours, so. Yeah, That's so actually very, a big part of it. Yeah, right. that was probably about half of the expense yeah. of our transportation. We did mostly walk around, but when we wanted to get to other parts of the island, we used, yeah, the cab. Um, next on our list is our travel insurance, which um, we've covered that if you've seen our expense videos before. We used Safety Wing. For the two of us for the month, it was $265 Canadian. 
All right, so next we had our SIM cards for our cell phones, um, which amounted to $74 for both of us. For more month. than I thought we would spend in Thailand. Yes. That was actually more expensive than a lot of the other countries we've been to. Yeah, so we typically, I think I might have mentioned this before, we typically buy our SIM cards at the airport, which is always inflated a little bit. So I think moving forward, we're going to try and find some deals at the 7-Elevens or there's some cheaper spots where you can purchase your SIM cards. So I think we're going to start looking at that. And I think that was one tip that we were given. So if you can, uh, just use airport Wi-Fi to get your grab or whatever. And yeah. then if you get to a 7-Eleven, um, which they're everywhere, um, apparently their SIM cards are quite a bit cheaper. Yeah. So that might be a tip for anybody heading there. Um, in our miscellaneous category, we spent uh, $60. That was mainly um, Mitch got a haircut and we had some pharmacy items, yep. just little things you need here and there. All right, so next we have our phone plan or our Skype phone plan, which we use uh, to be able to call 1-800 numbers when you have issues with banking or calling home and stuff like that. And that was $18 for the month. And last but not least, um, like we have started separating this because we realize different cultures and different people do different things. Um, we've separated our tips out. So that includes tips for um, our boat tour um, or any meals or things that uh, where we may have rounded up because not a big tipping culture at all in Thailand. Mm -hmm. So for the entire month, um, our tips amounted to $11 Canadian. All right, I think that's the end. So, so Jan. Big grand total. For the month in Thailand, it cost us 4,387 Canadian dollars. Um, I was kind of surprised. I thought this would be like a, another bit of a budget month, more like mm -hmm. Vietnam was. Yeah. Um, but no, Thailand came in a bit uh, more expensive, but we really loved our accommodations, as you saw yeah. at the beginning of this video. And oh, we didn't talk about beer and wine. We well, need let's to, talk about yeah. it. If you go to the grocery store or the 7-Eleven, which in Thailand, the 7-Eleven is basically a grocery store. <laughs> it's awesome. Um, you can buy a bottle or a can of beer for $1.55. Um, and then you can buy a bottle of wine for fifteen fifty, and that's at the lower end. Yeah. Um, you can spend a lot more money on wine there, but that was a decent um, bottle of wine for fifteen fifty. Um, now going out to the restaurants, a bottle of beer is going to cost you about three seventy Canadian. So that would be that's like the Singa, yep. like the local beer. Singa Leo. Yeah. Of others, yeah. Uh, Chang. Um, if you get a glass of wine out at the restaurant, that's going to run you around twelve ninety-five Canadian. Yeah. And if you go and you decide to get a bottle of wine for dinner, that runs you around forty-four dollars and thirty-five cents Canadian at the restaurants. Now, this is keeping in mind this was restaurants when we ate out at restaurants that served wine or bottles of wine or beer. That was tended to be more touristy yeah. where we were on Koh Samui. Um, so that could affect those prices a little bit. When we ate at places like at the market, they didn't serve beer. You'd have to run to 7-Eleven and get a beer, I guess, if you wanted to yeah. have a beer with your meal there. So um, that's what you're looking at. So you can sort of budget that accordingly. So still all in all, um, you know, I think we expected it to be a little... Um, more budget friendly, uh, but still for 4,400 Canadian dollars for the month. Um, and like we, we did everything that we wanted to do. Like mm -hmm. we didn't really, we didn't really hold back. Yeah. Um, and for that amount of money, I think, you know, it was a really, really good month. It was. We'll definitely be back to explore other parts of Thailand. Sure. Uh, but we hope you've enjoyed this, seeing how much it costs us to stay for a month um, on the island of Koh Samui in Thailand. Mm -hmm. And um, that's it. That wraps up Thailand. Uh, we're done with this travel series. We're actually done with this first chapter of being abroad. Like we said at the beginning of this um, bit, we're back in Canada and we're super excited to bring you guys along this summer. Uh, we'll continue to do our expenses by the month, only it will be the cost of living in a van, like Mitch <laughs> said. Um, and yeah, accommodations will be very different this year, but we'll have new categories like gasoline. 
Yep, and Diesel. <laughs> also, you know, are staying in provincial parks and stuff like yes, that. Yes, our accommodations will be quite different. It will be uh, park admission fees and I don't even know what else. Yeah, but I think Camping. it's, it's going to be fantastic. We really love our van. We love sleeping in our van. We love living in our van. Um, so we're going to put it to the test um, this year. Yes, we have not ever lived in it for months on end nope. and uh, so far it's beautiful I mean it was like six degrees this morning when we woke up but it was 12 degrees in the van which actually 12 degrees is a lovely temperature for nice. sleeping it's just crisp so van tours and everything else coming up in our next videos so we hope if you like this video if you did hit the like button <laughs> if you haven't already please subscribe so you can follow along our adventures. And of course, we will at the end of the summer be heading back out to do um, more travels abroad. Haven't quite figured that out yet, but that will be coming soon. All right, thanks everybody. Cheers. Cheers.